I've managed to get away without doing a five-minute talk for about a year and a half. <laughs> As a young girl, I was the car stereo that could not be switched off or turned down on road trips. My childhood was rich in music. My parents were both involved with music at the local church. Mum conducted the church choir and played and taught piano, and Dad played the organ. My sister Sarah also played piano and the violin. From a young age, I aspired to be a professional singer. I would regularly dress up as Maria from The Sound of Music. And at age six, I announced to the next door neighbour that I was going to be a nun. The response was, Jennifer, you will never be a nun. This was a fair comment given I was not at all successful at keeping my habit on when I eventually performed the role many years later. Then came the country phase. I taught myself to yodel by listening to Patsy Rigger on cassette tape over and over and spent many happy hours on my granddad's farm yodeling in the gully. At age eight, my parents took me to Avalon Studio to meet my country idols Patsy Rigger and Brendan Dugan, the very handsome Brendan Dugan, who I was certain at age eight I was going to marry even though there was a 20-something year age difference. <laughs> Patsy and Brendan were presenting Telethon and I was yodeled, yodeled for them. This was to be the first of a number of national television performances. Thankfully, I made the videotape of my yodeling on Telethon mysteriously vanish from the family video cabinet. And I think Mum and Dad are still upset about that, its dis disappearance to this day. Not too long following, Mum and Dad bought the cassette tape of Sir Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera. This is my favourite musical, and after memorising all of Christine's songs, Mum took me along to a wonderful local singing teacher in Wanganui for lessons, Ruth Evans. This was the beginning... Oh, just, that's me without my habit. And, and this was the beginning of many years of lessons and an opportunity to follow my dream of becoming a professional singer. At age, two, at age 13, I attended the first of the concerts at the Mission Estate, where for the first time I watched Dame Kiri Takanawa perform. Despite the thousands of people in the audience, the Herald interviewed me, and my once skinny long legs were published on its front page. In 1995, at the age of 15, I won the Royal Overseas League Scholarship, which was adjudicated by Professor Peter Godfrey, the founder of the New Zealand Choral Federation. The scholarship was to attend the 1997 New Zealand National Singing School. It was there that I met Emily Meir, who was the head of music at Victoria University School of Music at that time. Over the following three years, my supportive parents drove me to Wellington for regular tuition with Emily. 1997 to 2007 were extremely focused years perfecting my technique. I sang a lot of Handel and Mozart, attended the New Zealand National Opera School and performed many oratorios and lead roles with the Wellington Gilbert and Sullivan Light Opera Company. One highlight during those years that really stands out was being invited to perform as the guest soloist with Dame Melvina Major and the NZSO at Opera in the Acre at Wanganui Collegiate. This was my first outdoor concert and the first of a few performances over the years with Melvina. At another outdoor performance with Dame Melvina at Kauai Park and Fielding, backstage was a scout tent with no floor and a port -a -loo. Here we were, dressed in our finery, in such conditions while the audience was enjoying their wine and cheese on the lawn. A soprano's life is never glamorous. <laughs> in 2007, I was a semi-finalist in the Lexus Song Quest, one of 12 chosen out of 60 singers, some of which were already studying abroad at the schools of music. That same year, I toured the Lower North Island with the late Rob Guest as his soloist and performed my first opera role, Antonia, the Dying Consumptive, in the Tales of Hoffman, opposite Patrick Power, who is an internationally renowned New Zealand tenor. Following the opera, I was invited to Australia to perform two Schubert recitals, which required me to memorise over 80 pages of German. I vowed I would never sing German again. However, in November this year, I am the soloist for Mahler's Symphony No. 4 to be performed in New Plymouth. Also in 2007, I was engaged to perform a second season of my favourite role, Maria in the Sound of Music, with Pan Pacific Productions and Ray Wolf. The leading lady they had cast in Hawke's Bay's production was pregnant and showing just three weeks out from Curtin Call and you just can't have a pregnant Maria. <laughs> So every day for two weeks I flew up to Napier from Wellington on the 4.20pm flight. I would drive to the Hastings Opera House where someone would provide me with a bowl of soup while someone styled my hair and applied makeup. 
I would perform the show, attend the sponsors' events and drive back to Napier each morning to catch the 6.50am flight to Wellington so I could be at my desk by 8.30 and this was my routine for the duration of the show. In 2009, my friend Karen Andreasen had returned home from London and we talked about how we might create more paid performance opportunities in New Zealand. Pop opera was very popular at the time with groups like Amici and El Devo in the market. We decided we would create an all-female pop opera trio and New Zealand pop opera trio Trey Bell was established six years ago. The third member of the trio is Jess Siegel. We have developed a very special friendship through our shared love of music. We have produced two albums and a music video thanks to a kind donation from the Garibaldi Club Trust. We have toured our own shows all over the country, performed at Coca-Cola Christmas in the Park in Auckland's Domain, as well as at numerous festivals such as Taranaki's beautiful Festival of Lights, the Taupo Erupt Festival, and this weekend we will perform a two-hour show in Blenheim at the Pollard Park Summer Concert Series. We have performed at many corporate events and conferences and it was an honour to perform at the launch of the Pike River Trust and Wellington on a Plate for Christchurch. The launch of the Pike River Trust event was held in the Grand Chancellor as it was then in Christchurch just days before the quake. Attendees there included the Prime Minister, Bob Parker and a range of celebrities and sports stars. In 2013 we performed in all performances of the World of Wearable Arts and performed internationally. The first of our international invitations was to be the headlined act at the world's largest luxury watch and jewellery festival, A Journey Through Time in Kuala Lumpur. We had no idea of the scale of this event until we arrived in the city to find ourselves on billboards and on the screens and the trains. We sang for royalty, ministers and dignitaries who could afford the jewellery that was on display. While we performed, we wore jewellery by Gerard, who designed the crown jewels, and Damiani that was worth millions. Following the week of performances, we were hosted at Pankalaut Resort, a stunningly picturesque private island where we indulged in spa treatments. Getting back on the plane was a reality shock. Like Cinderella who lost her glass slipper, I had lost my diamonds. <laughs> Following our time in Malaysia, we were invited to perform at the Sydney Carols in the Domain, which was broadcast to three million across Australia and Asia. We were billed with Danny Minogue, Jimmy Barnes and Mark Vincent, Tina Arena and Stan Walker. We were the featured act when the fireworks were let off and believe me when I say the stage shook and we could barely hear the orchestra or ourselves due to the noise of the fireworks above us. 2014 was a busy year and saw the establishment of my business JLR and Karen became pregnant and recently gave birth to a beautiful little girl. A few weeks ago I performed the National Anthem at Telegraph Day and the Wellington Cup at Trentham. And once again, beautifully attired, I was put out to pasture in the birdcage, right where the horses had been. It wasn't until last week that I realised my beautiful white shoes were stained and it turned out I had sung the National Anthem on live television, standing in horse dung. <laughs> Although a singer's life is not always glamorous, singing is my passion. It is a gift that I love to share and I feel truly blessed by the opportunities that I have had and enriched by the people I have met and the friendships I have made along the way.